Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Michael, KE4EST. And on the bench today, I have a little bitty oscilloscope. Uh, well, I should have been prepared with a ruler or something here, but this is not very tall. Let's see, there's usually one, right? Well, guess I could use this. <laughs> Well, not a ruler, ruler, but it'll work. You can see there, right at nine inches tall, and about a little over seven inches across. The deepness of it, while we're measuring, is about eleven and a half inches. But anyhow, oh, I've really got a oil this chair here. I've been wanting one of these for the longest time. Not particular this brand or anything. Uh, but I always thought these little oscilloscopes were neat. And you know I think I mentioned a time or two before back years ago I did have a couple of them that you know meant to be restored at one day or whatever and then went through the ugly divorce and lost some things or whatever but anyway so now I'm trying to find some of this stuff back again I got this one off of eBay and it says United Electronics Laboratories or UEL you can see down here um, this I cannot find a schematic on this or anything like that but I did find um, 1940s and this United Electronics Laboratories was a, now if anybody knows anything different or, you know, please put it in the comments down below. I would love to see it if you know any more about this or have access to a schematic or something. But from what I can figure out, this uh, was a electronic school. And this is one of the things they had. And you had a bunch of these in the class you go in and the professor builds these with the class and so each student has one and they go through and build these so you know it was some kind and then they changed the name uh, United Television Laboratories or something let me see I've got so from everything I can find out though no schematics no documentation if you go, uh, see, I just won't switch it over. I'll just read it. It says United Electronics Laboratories. This is a Model E. This particular model says 1952. Somebody's put on here. This is from oscilloscopemuseum.com. It says this kit was built by students of the United Electronics Laboratories in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here now. They existed from the late 40s to the early 70s. And they changed their name to UEI, or United Electronics Institute, um, some point in the 70s. That's all I got here. They do tell what the tube lineup is here and stuff. And show some pictures. I mean, it's an identical unit to this one here. Um, the one somebody's got here is a little bit better shape. You can see this and here's got some. Maybe you can see that. Something going on here. Scratches and stuff, but... It's not that bad of shape, at least the front ain't. We'll get to the rest of it here in a minute. And then also, at MyVintageTV.com, I found one looks just exactly like this, except for down here it says UTL. And at the top it says United Television Laboratories. And this one says the scope was used as a training project for students enrolled in the United Television Laboratory School. School started off in the 1940s, um, on and on and on. Later changed their name to UEL, okay. So all I did was, well they changed their name, we're gonna use the same model and everything, and what, you know, we're not gonna change it. We got thousands of these things already, you know, made up or the chassis made up. We'll just put UEL instead of UTL on the front of it, but okay. But anyway, so that's all I can find on it. So if you've got any information or anything, you know, 
please post it below be nice to have a full schematic and maybe something else on this but everything seems to work you know and turn like it's supposed to all the potentiometers move nice and smooth and all that so maybe it's been kept okay you know to a point there's something here and I don't know if that scratches or it looks like something where you know those little bugs or something crawl around and leave their little trails or something I don't know if that'll come off or if uh, I think that's actually something that's got on it that's etched into the paint here or something because I can feel I'll find out later about that but anyway you know it's just a you know what maybe one to five meg scope something like that it's two inch tube in it here and that tube is a or at least what I found out is a 2AP1-A 2Alpha Papa 1-Alpha so you looked at the front of it long enough but it's interesting that you know I don't know who maybe had this and used it after school so the guy may have had this and you know an older guy that went to school then or something or it might have come from a, I think the guy I got it from said it came from an estate so I mean you know it wasn't his so you know who knows the story on it but it's kind of interesting turned around look on the top here you can see that is definitely you know uh, some kind of just a pull handle that you buy at the hardware store you know brass that's all that is right there and then if we pick it up here and turn it around we can see a little bit in this rear end you can see it's got the transformer there and it's got two other transformers or choke maybe and then we'll flip it over here and look at the bottom of it here flip over to the other camera so what do we see here we see that this is definitely original this is probably been changed out at one time um, like I said this one here is some of these times I have a date on these I have to look and see this is probably original but this is an older capacitor but it's still not very new oh actually I can see yeah right there we can see that it's got a date right here maybe you can see that December of 68 is when this calmed down the assembly line here. And, I mean, I don't know how good the student that put this together did. But you can look right there and you can see that this soldering here looks a little different than the soldering up here, like newer solder or something. So, yep, definitely been changed out at some point in its life. This one here is leaking stuff out of it, wax or something there. Maybe it's electrolyte. This one's definitely leaking. Now the guy said he, you know, of course, I hate get people do that. I'm like, ugh. But you gotta watch it sometimes getting stuff off of eBay. But I got a really good deal on this. Um, this happened to see it at the right time to write down. I was flipping through. I'm like, really? Maybe nobody else will bid on that and I'll snatch it up. He did have it turned on and showing pictures of Trace on the screen and all that. So. But I'm not going to do any more turning it on because you can see this is already leaking something. I've been when he turned it on or something, but I'll replace. This has got two capacitors in it. Let's see what do we can see here. It says Planet on it. Illinois, 450 volts. Um, 8 plus 8. So there's two 8, two eight microfarad capacitors in here transformers right here let's see coming out this is probably a rectifier so that is 
going to be replaced for sure and then somebody has changed out and put these in it here look at this these have been changed out that's not original that's not original neither that one you know, these are all modern day what they call orange drops so them have been changed out this Allen Bradley style resistor it's got newer looking solder in it oh, I thought I found a loose solder connection but I didn't and it's really shiny here compared to some of the other ones this carbon film resistor here is obviously modern and these carbon film one two you can see those up in there maybe you can see that them's been changed this capacitor here is an older one but that's been changed now whoever recapped this you know could have went in and changed these out um, for all I know with this you know a new old stock you know because people still have it in their head they because there's I don't want to get on that soapbox right now but still people out there saying oh just reform the capacitors they'll be okay if they're new old stock they're fine and I see a lot of these especially these right here on eBay and stuff new old stock you know recap your old radio or your old whatever and use original parts but where this has been used or not they're breaking down inside the paper's going bad it's just no just bad 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 idea replace everything capacitors are too cheap nowadays to try reform and all that nonsense yes I know there's with the audio guys that's a little bit different story but a piece of test equipment you know that's just silly to reform the capacitors um so there's all that so we can see there's been a lot of you know I don't know it could be one guy it's not perfect I've seen better soldering and set up of course it's point to point I know but I mean some of it's tried to be tied here and some of it's a little messy but somebody's twisted these and try to make them nice here these capacitors here these are 0.25 microfarad 600 volt but anyway let me get screws out of it and we'll take a look at it and it's that's another thing it's got um, different oddball screws stuck in it it's uh, you know these ain't too bad but then we got these up here that are hex head and these you know flat head slot heads and then in the back it's got something different and this handle has been not the original handle obviously and things like that but let me get this apart and we'll look inside of it now okay well got the screws out of it looky right here see that it's a arced burn mark there and some of the metals missing somebody had a bad day somewhere here and this I don't know what this is all about this is this does not look right it could be I do not think thought that was fused there for a minute I don't think this is the original line cord but it's just stuck in and going down in there like that which may be fine but it's just stuck in through a hole there with no grommet or anything not the best idea and let's turn it around here and well now we can see the inside a little bit more here now the tubes are taken out of it I've not put them in yet but um, the guy said he pulled the tubes out and you can see he stuck them in a box here and he's labeled them and he was even nice enough to save a little time some of it you can figure out to save a little time of you can put a little legend in there where he pulled them out of and what went where before he that way when he shipped it it would be 
you know, he did leave in the tube, pitcher tube, if you want to call it that. But let's turn it. I'm trying to figure out how I want to turn this thing. You can see all these other capacitors all been changed. And what's interesting is they went through and changed all these capacitors. There's, you know, normally it would probably have been you know, these paper and full capacitors. You know, but they didn't change out, you know, the electrolytics. Maybe they didn't have any, or, I mean, that's just kind of weird. Usually, uh, if you've got this stuff, you've got that, or you can order if you ordered these up. But, just really interesting. And then the shield, let's see, around the tube. It's all intact. A little loose right here, though. Now that's loose. That's got to be tightened up, but it's not a big deal. So that's it. It's got some rust going on here on the transformer. It's going to be kind of cleaned off a little bit. So I'm do that and clean that up. Do all that. And I am going to recap it change out these you know electrolytics that were left behind and I'll fire it up and we'll have a look at it when I come back all right everybody I am back here and I've went through this and you can see mainly what I've done this here's been all redone, tidied up to get some noise off the screen. And that took care of that. This here's still just going through there, no grommet. That's because I'm going to take more of this out later on and put some curve tracer parts in here probably. So instead of redoing all this nice and pretty and then tearing it back out to use this room here, these here I'll probably move so it's just going to the ground I can move those over or replace it with a different one um, and put this in plenty of room here to maybe move this around do whatever I need to to make this have plenty of room here and I replaced these electrolytics mainly I cleaned all that up I did go through all the resistors and every one of them's pretty much spot on you know real close to tolerance uh, of course none was spot on if it says 220 ohms it wouldn't turn 20.00 but it was close enough changed all these electrolytics out one two there that was that can that was in there and over here replaced this one and this little one right here it's been replaced so let's see that's pretty much all on the bottom clean some things up like I said and test everything everything tests out good then on the top when I uh, took this transformer out to clean everything I went ahead and just put a new coat of paint on it so that's good and done I checked the tubes. I had one back here that was weak, so I replaced it. One of the rectifier tubes. I still have not found schematic on this. I've looked and looked, and I started to go through and reverse engineer it because it ain't a whole lot to it. But for now, I think I'll just keep looking and see if it comes to it. And I need to. It'll take you know a couple hours one evening to sit and just trace all this stuff out. And we can, you know, make a schematic up. This CRT here, took it out, cleaned it, put it back in, tightened this shield up. And I've noticed if you look, these are not too hard to find, some new old stock ones. You can find these CRTs pretty easy still right now, and they're not 
uh, relatively they're not too awfully bad in price probably about 40 bucks or something like that the new old stock so never need one of those this one here is pretty good you know you think with this thing being a something that's used you know for training or whatever it may have some burning on it but i don't know if this was used for training and they kind of went through it a few times and the next class comes through and went through the same ones or if part of your you know tuition to pay was build a oscilloscope take it home with you they you know had another one for the next year or whatever for the next class i don't know but anyway i didn't have this cleaned up it's got a little surface dust on it here clean some other stuff in the shop and got a little dust on it here before i um done that yesterday but anyway you know what i didn't realize i got it that dusty but anyway so this tube here a 6x5 was the one that was uh it was showing weak it would still come on and work but it was showing weak and if you look at the one that came out of it is a jan which is joint army navy 5852 and you know from bendix and all that i found some of these online just it says right on them you know 5852 you can see right here or some kind of I don't know if it's trying to get gassy there or what, but yeah, this one here, one side of it's not working right. It's working, but it's real, real weak. I mean, they want arm and leg for these things if it says 58, 52 on it. But if you get a 6X5 GT, then uh, you're good to go. So I did all that, placed all that, cleaned it up, cleaned all these contact switches and potentiometers, and believe me, they were dirty. And I turned it on and went through it um you could see the trace and you move this those controls just a little bit and the screen would go all crazy and just touching them and trying to just wiggle it just to get it to settle down for a second so i could test it out and i was like okay that's got to be clean so turned it off discharged capacitors unplugged it cleaned and cleaned those things out now they're working better so that's what i did so let me set up what I'm going to do. I'll just set this here, I guess. What I'm going to do is hook up my external curve tracer that I built and use that for testing it and showing you the screen on it because, I mean, it's not really exciting. You know, it's just an old, neat device. I just thought it was neat to take it and make sure it's going keep it going and maybe even use it like i said for a curve tracer it'd be a real neat little small curve tracer set off in the you know i've got plenty of oscilloscopes but this one will be a little bitty two inch tube and you know two inch crt on it and be kind of neat but i don't know it may get a little aggravating the small crt but we'll see but let me set that up and i'll be right back okay so i've got it set up and focus down there i've got some of the lights dimmed down a little bit so you can see this because while you had it you wouldn't be able to see the screen this is the intensity control here and it won't go completely out if i go any further it's also the on off switch but this is it here so we can see horizontal gain works so I can put these together, see so vertical gains will work in there. And it does get blurred toward the ends. I don't know if that's just the circuitry in here, the way the CRT is. They don't do that with this on other oscilloscopes with my curve tracer, so I don't know. You know, this side's sharp around the bottom, it's blurred at the top, and you can get that a little bit better. It's always it ain't a nice pretty straight line all the way across. But anyway, this is just a good thing to show you, you know, it's a way to show you the controls here. So here's my vertical centering. It was I'd be messing with this and it'd shoot up here like this and have sparklies on the screen. And I think the horizontal gain was that way. 
Um, they was all a little touchy. They was all, you know, moved good, but really dirty inside. But there it is. It's working. I just thought it was neat. Put a capacitor across it here. So we can give it a little more probably vertical gain. Make that more of a pretty circle. This don't have any kind of stigmatism control or anything inside. And so that could be something that could be added. Probably clear some of this up. But everybody knows what a curve tracer is, but there's a capacitor. Of course, the resistor is going to make it sideways. If I put it together, it's going to be up and down. I can turn my voltage up and down here. So, I could dig out some more parts. I just happened to have a capacitor laying there. I thought I had a. Here's a diode. I could diode up and show you a diode. See how that's going to. Right, there's about 0.7 volts. It's not a Zener diode or you get around right here somewhere and shoot up the other side, but anyway, so I mean it'll work. It's not too bad. I mean for a small screen for just quick testing and run through a circuit or something. You can see when I touch it, I put some capacitance into that. But anyway, there it is. Hope you've enjoyed seeing me uh resurrect this little thing and if anybody's got a schematic or can find a schematic or anything you know UEL UTL like I said first video uh, this is a model 8 or no wait a minute model E if you can you know please post it in the comments or post the link email it to me something like that whatever that would be nice to have a schematic on this but, but anyway hope you've enjoyed the video if you're not subscribed, please subscribe if you'd like to hit like. And until the next video, this is Michael, KE4EST73.